Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. And if it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to subscribe, you're welcome to share, you're welcome to like. Um, what I wanted to talk about is something I actually tagged onto a previous video about the home office and tricking illegal immigrants into churches under an advice line scheme. So what I've done is I tagged on what I'm going to discuss now and then on reflection I thought it really merited its own video because what has happened is that um, a gentleman who was working for the Home Office, he was using um, the, uh, the documents of people who had a right to remain and settle status in the UK and swapping them for imposters. Now, I don't know if you remember that video I did where this guy was suing the Home Office. Well, he wasn't suing them, but he was challenging them because they had written um, a letter to him and said he was from Iraq. Do you remember that? And I don't know if it's all linked because he was claiming that how could they get him mixed up with somebody from Iraq and his, his application was rejected. Now, what I'm wondering now is that this gentleman who used, his name is Shamsu Iqbal. Now, he swapped 437, um, let me read this. Shamsu Iqbal, 61, exploited his trusted position to falsify records for at least 437 people, charging each one £14,000 for a ghost identity. He was earning 23000 a year and was at the centre of a £6 million conspiracy which allowed hundreds of illegal immigrants into the country. In April 2018, Iqbal and three others were involved in the scam and were found guilty um, and they face a maximum sentence of 14 years in jail. Now, I think they've already been sentenced. Exactly how many immigrants who were given ghost identities may never be known. When ringleader Iqbal was arrested, investigators found bank accounts containing more than £1 million in cash. Prosecutors explained how Iqbal would access home office records of migrants who had been given, who had been granted the right to stay in Britain and swap them for details of imposters. Now, why I mention that guy who, um, whose application was rejected and it had Iraq in the letter is because I'm wondering, the 437 people who are out there now believing that they have legitimate indefinite leave to remain documents, they could have had them swapped by this guy. How do you know if you've been, if you've got indefinite leave to remain, how do you know that your documents haven't been swapped? I wonder if the Home Office has written to those 437 people. If they have, if somebody has got a letter from them, please let me know. But I wonder if the Home Office has written to those 437 people who have indefinite leave to remain to say that their documents have been tampered with. Because if they haven't, those same people could, well, maybe they wouldn't even need to go back to the Home Office because if it, that guy's quite smart because if they have indefinite leave to remain, there's no reason for them to go back and reapply. So once they have got their indefinite leave to remain, I guess they would just carry on business as usual. And that's probably why he got away with it. But you could be one of those whose documents he has swapped for an imposter. So the imposter would have your documents and you would have the imposter's documents. And that could have happened with that guy who got that letter from the Home Office asking him to go back to Iraq. Investiga investigators with the Home Office's anti-corruption unit spent three years identifying at least 437 cases of documents being faked. The ghost imposter 
would get a new identity of a real migrant who had been given either leave to remain or no time limit status to stay in Britain. The deception that has been allowed to go on for years is highly embarrassing for the Home Office. Some of those given new identities could even be potential terrorists. Many of them have simply melted away, meaning we'll never be able to trace them. Iqbal's co-accused were Sheikh Mohammed Usman, 45, legal caseworker Mohammed Kawa Aftab Hussein, 49, and worker Mohammed Ibrahim Ali, 48. Usman is a qualified lawyer of Pakistani origin who worked at a number of firms in London. British citizen Hussein was born in Pakistan and Ali, who came to Britain from Bangladesh, age 12, both worked at solicitors' practices in London. This enabled them to engage in the criminality as they would facilitate correspondence with the Home Office on behalf of the imposters to help straighten out their immigration status, the trial heard. Iqbal had his own secure login to the Home Office system, which records details of individual cases and applications to remain in the country. Croydon Crown, Hall, Croydon Crown Court heard the gang were caught out when they tried to alter the details of a legal migrant from Ghana who had been jailed for robbery and was liable for deportation. So if they never caught that guy, these guys would have been carrying on. They happened to choose somebody who they needed to investigate, the Home Office needed to investigate. That's how they found them out. They denied 13 charges of conspiracy to assist unlawful immigration between January 2010 and April 2016. But you know, that is kind of scary because you could be thinking, oh, I'm fine, I'm in this country. And you never know, you can have overhaul. You know this thing with the wind rush where these people were asked to produce documents all over again or find documents to prove their status. And then, you know, a lot of them it passed their statute of limitations and goodness knows what. You could be one of those 437 who believes that they're in this country, you've got your indefinite leave to remain, and you don't have to worry about it. And now you've got somebody in the Home Office who swapped your documentation and given it to some imp imposters. They don't know where these imposters are, they don't know who they are, they don't know how many of them, they've only found 437. I think that's bloody scary. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Not quite sure what you can do with the information, but knowledge is power. Bye-bye.